St. Graham Productions. Jezek refuses to talk to us, the stubborn bastards asking to see you. A foreigner by the name of Eric gave me instructions, but for sure he isn't the chief. And there's someone highly placed at the monastery who's mixed up in it too. But I don't know who. I met some old friends in Colleen a few months ago, and they said they were heading for Sassau, that armed men were being recruited, and they'll hire anyone. You're telling me this Eric is recruiting armed men in Sasa? Tomorrow night there'll be a light in the Sasa church and the door will be open. Go in and start praying, our Father. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. What? Spare me the boasting. I've got a test ready for you. If you want to join us, you have to kill Pius. It's quite a test. He's hiding in a monastery. I'm Carl. I'm supposed to enter as a novice. We expected you sooner. Everything's prepared. It's time for you to take your vows. Do I really have to wear this? You'd better get used to it. You'll be wearing it for the rest of your life. gathered here today to welcome a new novice into our midst. 
Dear brother, forget your former life and embrace your new vocation in the community of the monks of St. Benedict. Opus Dei, Obedientia, Obprobria, the service of God, obedience, and endurance of all discomfort. These are the cornerstones and succor of our order, which on this day shall become your own. Suscipe me, Domine, secundum eloquium tuum, et vivam. Et non confundas me, ab expectatione mea. Suscipe me, Domine, secundum. In loquium tuum et viva. In loquium tuum vivam. Et, et non confundas me ab expectatione. Accept your new name, Brother Gregor, and wear it with honor. Welcome, Brother. Welcome, Brother. I am Antonius, a novice like you. I've been instructed to guide you around the monastery and tell you what you can expect and what your duties will be. Thanks for helping me out during the ceremony. I had no idea what I was supposed to do. You don't know Latin, do you? Don't worry. Work in the scriptorium will teach you fast enough. Why exactly are you here? Was it your choice? Or did someone force you to come? I'm being punished. If it were up to me, I'd still be spending my days in taverns and my nights with whores. I don't envy you. Unfortunately, you're here for the rest of your life. Let's go, then. Good. But before we do, here's a letter directly from the prior telling you all your regular duties from tomorrow onwards. Make sure to read it this evening, so you know how things work. Right, we can go now. Follow me closely. I'll explain everything as we go. Remember one word. Discipline. It's your job to work and pray. You serve the Lord now, not your own bodily needs. This is the way to the dormitory, where we all sleep. You'll find a free bed there, which is now yours. Do you know the first thing the monastery taught me? To appreciate sleep. We rise before dawn every day. It takes a bit of getting used to it. This is the garden, a place for silent contemplation and meditation. Centuries ago, this monastery was founded by the most esteemed of brothers, St. Procopius. His earthly remains can be found in a cave under the monastery, and his spirit wanders the corridors at night, punishing any misbehaving novices. <laughs> so beware. Here are the fratery and scriptorium, together with the library. These are the places where we work. Ora et labora. Pray and work. As a novice, you must always listen to your superior brethren. And above us monks are the prior, and the circators, who punish every infraction. You'll know them by the canes they carry. Do what they say. This is the refectory, where we come together to eat. During meals, you must be silent. Only one brother reads aloud from the rule of Saint Benedict. The rule is the only law we recognize, with the exception of those from God himself. If you break any of its precepts, a swift punishment but I've already told you about the circuitors. The library, the pride of our monastery, a trove of learning. We don't just read books here, we also copy them. You too will learn how. And that's all. Today you are still free from duty, but tomorrow you begin work like the others. If you need anything, ask any of the brothers. We'll be glad to help you. 
and I recommend you get to know the other novices. You already know me. Then there is Siskin, Yodok, and Lucas. Thanks for showing me around. There's a lot to learn here. Will you tell me something about yourself? There's not much to tell. I lived in Vlashim, and after my father died, I found out I wasn't much of a merchant. So I left the shop to my brother, and decided to become a monk. It's peaceful here. There's food and lots of time to read. So you chose to come here? It may seem strange, but I'm one of the few novices that did. I might be the only one. The truth is, the idea of spending my life in a monastery was more appealing than being cooped up in a greasy old shop. Who's in charge of things around here? Truthfully, everyone except us. But officially, Abbot Peter. And soon enough, someone else. As if it mattered. Our life will still be work and prayer. My name's Gregor, a novice. You can call me Siskin. But are you here of your own free will or is this a punishment? Although, it's not important. Welcome to purgatory. Did you say purgatory? You'll see soon enough. Soon enough. Will you tell me something about yourself? Look, nothing against you, but I prefer not to talk about my past. Are you hiding something? Why are you so reluctant to tell me anything about yourself? I'm hiding a lousy past that I'd rather forget. I hate to think of all I lost when they stuck me in here. And also, because I really hate the question, aren't you the son of the famed Sir Smil Flashka Pardubitz? I was rich and I had everything. But then my father began to feel his time approaching, so he decided to send a son to the monastery. And, being the youngest, the lot fell on me. I've no head for managing the estate, and they said I'd squander it. Can you imagine? Me, in a monastery. So I took what coin I could from home with me, so I didn't lose out completely. But you didn't have to come here if you didn't want to. No, not if I didn't mind being left to beg alms by the city gate. I had one choice, the monastery or nothing. If it had come to that after my father's death, so big, to get rid of me while he's still alive... They must have realized you robbed them. <laughs> I donated some of the silver to the monastery when I came in, just to piss them off. I can just see my brothers, I mean my siblings, arguing with the abbot to give it back. And you stashed away the remainder? Indeed so. What's your plan with this treasure? To get out of here as soon as I can. I'll wait another year or two until my hot-headed brothers cool off a bit, and then I'll take the silver and run off somewhere, far, far away from here. That's all I wanted to know. Please, keep it to yourself. Especially the part about the coin. How is it that you don't get any penance for missing morning prayers? I've paid off the circators to turn a blind eye. And the other monks don't notice as long as you show your face there from time to time. No one's too awake at that time of the morning. I'd be interested to hear what you think about the other novices. Oh, if there was a monk I'd recommend as a friend, with of course the exception of myself, it would be Antonius. He has a calm soul, He's easy to talk to, and you can always rely on him. Thank you for your time, brother. Ah, Gregor. Talk to me. What can you tell me about the novices here? What can I say? You're here to demonstrate your devotion to God and to live a monastic life. After a year, you can make your vows and become a fully-fledged brother. I meant something specific about the brothers that are here. But you know them yourself. Yodok is an odd one, but he's diligent and eager. Perhaps too eager. Siskin is good company, but a bit too worldly for a monk. Antonius is hard-working and will help you with anything. But prays less than he ought. Lucas is as quiet as a mouse and no one knows much about him. And then we have you. About who I know nothing. I'm Gregor, a novice. I saw you at the ceremony. I know. It was hard not to notice you. And you are? Lucas, also a novice. Don't get upset, but I don't want to talk to you. I'm happiest alone. I'd like to know something about the other novices. I don't know much, but ask away. You really don't know anything about anyone? 
Well, thanks anyway. Don't get upset. I'm sorry I can't tell you more. I just haven't felt like getting to know anyone yet. Will you tell me something about yourself? I... there's nothing I can tell you. I mean, where you're from, what sort of life you had before, that sort of thing. I'm a novice, and my monastic name is Lucas. Nothing else matters. Come on. Is there really nothing at all you can tell me? I could, but I don't want to. I'm sorry. I want to stay focused on work and prayer, not on who I once was. I never will be again. What has been isn't important for us. We cast the past aside when we walked through the monastery gates and took our oath. Never forget that. Greetings, brother. I'm Gregor, and I'm new here. Greetings to you, brother. I'm Yodok, the oldest of the novices. I hope you'll like it here in the monastery and that you won't get into trouble. Trouble? You're young, perhaps intemperate. You might easily stray from the rules of the order. I suggest you get to know the older monks. You never know when they might come in handy. What can you tell me about Siskin? Oh. He's always got a smile on the new friend, but I reckon he don't belong in the monastery. He spends more time dreaming of the world outside than tending to his duties. I'm surprised he hasn't been thrown out already. If he was up to me, he'd be out on his ear right away. Sounds like you don't have much time for him. I wouldn't trust him as far as I could throw him. Believe me, Gregor, he's hiding something from us. In fact, now I come to think of it, I haven't seen him at morning prayers for a while. Do you know anything about Antonius? Only that he came to the monastery voluntarily, because he didn't want to work in his father's shop. Antonius is all right. You can rely on him. He won't betray your confidence. He's always happy to help, which is more than can be said for the other brothers. I'm interested in Lucas. Nobody knows much about Lucas. He keeps himself to himself. If you ask me, he's got something to hide. I'd keep well clear of him if I was you. Do you have any grounds for suspecting him of something? Quite a lot. And also none at all. The circators who make the rounds despise him, and they never punish anyone without cause. Can you tell me something about yourself? I would if there was anything noteworthy to say. But I'm just the ordinary son of a landowner, now a monk. There's nothing in my past, present, or future that anyone could find interesting. Why did he join the monastery? Because it was better than living in poverty. As the youngest son, I'm not entitled to inherit my father's estate. But he was kind enough to sell off some cattle and send me here. And you know what? I'm glad to be here. It's better than mucking out manure. What would you like? What can you tell me about Siskin? That there's no man alive less suitable for the monastic life than him. You don't know young Lord Capon. <laughs> I've heard things. Siskin must have been like him. Fighting, drinking, fornicating. But then he ended up in here. Why is he in the monastery? No one knows. Maybe he's hiding from something. Or maybe he's being punished. Do you think he has a secret? Don't we all? But unlike the others, he absolutely refuses to speak about his life before the monastery. What about your doc? Be on good terms with him. If you show even the slightest hint you don't like him, he'll make your life hell. He's a slimy little pedant who'll rat you out to the superiors. Once he finishes his novitiate, I imagine he'll want to climb his way up the ladder to at least Sir Cater. He's a man who enjoys ordering others around. I'm interested in Lucas. No one knows much about him. He doesn't talk to anyone. He works, eats, sleeps, then does it all again the next day. It's as if he wanted to get it all over with as soon as possible. By it, I mean his entire life. That's all. Thanks.
Servus. second time. For the cold, for laughter, these we condemn everywhere with a perpetual ban. And for such conversation, we do not permit a disciple to open his mouth. The rule of... And Peter's health is deteriorating. They say he won't make it to the autumn. No, no, Peter has a strong constitution. He'll still be on this earth for many years to come. I'm Gregor, a novice. Excellent. I've been waiting for you. There's the alchemist's laboratory. You'll find ingredients in the chests next to it. Concoct two buck's blood potions. Once you finish them, you'll find me somewhere nearby. Don't forget to let me know when you're done so I can check them. I've finished my work. Show me what you've made. Spectacular, Gregor. You've found your talent. Soon enough, you'll be teaching the other novices. I'm here to work. Good. This is most likely the first time you've ever done this in your life. But it's easier than you think. Just a bit of practice and learning Latin. Here's the original, and here are the blank parchments on which you'll copy what you read in the original. Is that clear? Then you may begin, and try not to make a mess of it. I can hardly believe it. Good gracious, so many mistakes. Yes, 
necessary until about the fourth hour. And from the fourth hour Praise until be to about our Lord the sixth, Jesus. let them apply themselves to reading. After the sixth hour, having left the table, let them rest on their beds in perfect silence. Or if anyone may perhaps want to read, let him read to himself in such a way as not to disturb anyone else. I'm still curious about this treasure trove of yours. It's no big terrible secret. Really, it isn't. I just go and read during services. There's no time otherwise. I mean, at other times, I don't get to read what I like. And I keep it under the slab so the others don't find it. What kind of a book is it? I found it here in the library. It was on a shelf where it should never have been. So I hid it to read later. It's the Necronomicon. Ghosts, demons, and invocations of powers beyond our world. Only it's written in a strange language that I can't really make sense of. All bara this and bara that. Who knows what it means? I tried to count the syllables, read the words backwards, but nothing. I'm not getting anywhere with it. Oh, I'm not too sure what the prior or the cicator would say about a book like that. Actually, what anyone would say. It sounds quite... Prohibited. Ah, prejudice. But you're right, it is prohibited. For no good reason, though. Has knowledge ever done anybody any harm? You're right. Knowledge should never be prohibited. Oh, I'm glad you agree. Just take a look at the book. Maybe you'll be able to make some sense of it. I haven't grasped a single syllable. Just please don't tell anyone about the book. If the brothers learn that I took it from the library and hid it, I'll be in a lot of trouble. Our brothers' minds are closed to a thirst for knowledge. 